So we've seen Euclidean spaces, uh, and the good thing about these is they put geomet uh, geometric structure on, uh, you know, tuples tuples of points. So now, in order to actually do anything with this geometric structure, we need to impose an algebraic formalism for the behavior of points and lines and planes and hyperplanes eventually. Uh, in the Euclidean spaces. So, so the first thing that uh, we'll talk about um, uh, is vectors, right? So vectors, uh, we've essentially seen vectors, but vectors are essentially points uh, tuples, say, uh, but where Uh, we recognize their algebraic structure. Right, so we've seen a tuple, uh, and we'll write x arrow is equal to x1, x2, x3 all the way up to xn. So we've seen those tuples and when we talk about a vector we're just going to put an arrow and say that it's a vector to distinguish it as a special thing. But this is essentially a row, right? In terms of our, our matrix language this is just a row and also we can talk about columns and we'll, we'll often call those vectors and when we need to distinguish them we'll say something's a row vector or a column vector but when we when we look at this as a column or a row, we now have an algebraic structure, right? Because we already know how to do uh, algebra with matrices, right? But before we get into matrices, right, uh, we're going to talk about what vector addition means with these these things, right? Um, and so, and in particular, the vector between two points so if we have points P and Q then the vector p, q, right, so these are tuples, p and q are tuples, well it's going to be q1 minus p1, q2 minus p2, all the way up to qn minus pn. It's just this this new tuple, right, that I formed from the tuple of points, and I distinguish it with an arrow to kind of indicate that a displacement has occurred, or some, something of that nature. Uh, and and in general, this means that we can we can have a graphical representation of vector addition, right? So when we had matrix addition, it wasn't really convenient to represent it graphically, right, or geometrically. But here we have a nice way to represent it, and and it's uh it's what we call tip to tail, tip to tail. Uh, so let's say this is a vector u, right, and then we have a vector v. Well, we're gonna add when we want u plus v, we're gonna add it to the tip of this guy, uh, and then so the tail is going to sit on the tip and then we're going in the same direction of V and this vector here, the resulting vector which goes to the point uh, that, I, that I obtained from adding tip to tail, I'm gonna call that U plus V and that's the graphical representation of what's, what's happening here. Um, so for, uh, for example so let's just get an example where we're actually using some numbers here. So let's say u is equal to 1, 2, and v is equal to, say, 2, 1. Uh, then u plus v, well, I'm just going to add entry-wise, right? And this actually corresponds with this picture. And if I add entry-wise, I'll just get 3, 3, right? So I add 1 to 2, and then 3, to 1, that'll give me 3, 3. Uh, we can also add multiples of vectors, right? So 2u minus v, right? And in this, in this scenario, I would just multiply. I would add 2 of u's, right? Or I would scale u by some number, and then I would, wherever that vector led me, I would add the new v, or subtract v, from the, the tip of that, right? I would put that new vector that I'm adding or subtracting, I would put its tail on the tip of u. 
well this is going to be equal to well it's uh, 2 minus 2 and then I'm going to have 4 minus 1 here which will end up with 0 comma 3 in the long run so I can do that and because these are essentially matrices right this is essentially matrix addition and subtraction and I have scalar multiplication out here uh, I have all these all these nice rules that are being obeyed right so I have uh, the commutative property of uh, so this is for matrix or for for matrix addition I have the commutative property of course and so I'll have a commutative property for vector addition right I have the associative property Uh, and then I have distributive properties. Right, so if, uh, if I have a, an R plus an S and those are scalars U, then this is equal to R U plus S U. Uh, and if I have a R times U plus V, so this is two types of distributivity, R U plus R V, right? Uh, and that that basically is it for vector addition in Euclidean space. It's really simple and it's very nicely visual. You can visualize it. And that's why it's really useful to have vector addition and vector manipulation in mind. So in the next talk, we're going to talk about length and distance, right? So we want to be able to measure length and distance in the plane and in three dimensions. It's pretty easy to understand what length and distance mean. But we're going to have to be a little more creative when, we're, when we get into Rn, right? So what is, what is length and distance in Rn? So that'll, that'll be an interesting thing that we run into. That'll be pretty fun.